Okay, so this is my cluster case from 52Pi given to me by GeekPi, uh, and I've also matched it with the Ice Tower cooler, uh, which came from Seed Studio, but it's also a 52Pi product. So the Ice Tower cooler you might have seen a lot. It is, it is definitely one of the best coolers for the Pi. It works incredibly well. It's the best one I've tried. Uh, so I've got a fan here. That normally comes with the fan on it, uh, and that's how you use it. But I've taken the fan off because, as you can see behind, there is a very big fan uh, which is blowing cool air right across the Pi. Uh, and it's blowing it across the heatsink and also even the SSD drive, or if you had a hard drive in there, it would be cooling that as well. So this is my case of choice really, because I do a lot of testing, because I do a lot of operating systems. I need access to the SD card, so it places it right at the back where it's very, very accessible. Uh, I've also got access to change out the drive as well, so and all the ports are accessible, even on the side, so we've got the USB-C, the two micro HDMIs, and the headphone jack. They're all very accessible as well. They're a little bit in, so you can see that you know it's all the way in there, but actually it's very easy to plug the cables in. If you want to, you can move this across uh, and get it closer to the ports, uh, so, you've, so this gap is closer to where all the sockets are. So the advantage of that would be it would be easy to plug things in and out, but I wonder if it would get such good cooling properties. So I keep it like this. I think this combination works incredibly well for me. If I want it to be completely silent, I can unplug the fan, but uh, the fan isn't that obtrusive. It, it, it really does work well. Anyway, the purpose of this uh, is basically to do a bit of overclocking, but also see the difference that the overclocking makes. Everything Computers did a video where as he was going up on the overclocking, he actually got to a point where uh, it was slower, but it wasn't that high when he was overclocking. So I was interested in that because I generally overclock at 2147, and uh, and haven't really thought oh it's because uh, it's stable and the operating system doesn't crash but I haven't really considered that it might not be faster than overclocking at two gigahertz so that's what I intend to have a look at today and give it a test so let's get plugged in and uh, give it a try okay so I've been looking through the uh, official Raspberry Pi documentation for the Pi 4 and uh, just sort of going through the settings I need for overclocking because I haven't done this for a while and I thought I'd just see if anything had changed. Um, I did manage to find in Tom's hardware, they've got a line which I can't see written anywhere in the documentation, uh, but I think I've used it before, and uh, it's this current limit override equals one. Now, force turbo equals one basically keeps your clock speed at the highest, so this is currently on stock and you can see it's on 1600. If I was to launch, uh, or if I click on Chrome, it will probably go up to 1500. You probably have to do something. So if I click on YouTube, there you go. So it goes up to 1500. So let's close that down. Uh, but uh, so force turbo equals one enables your over voltage to go over six. Without that line, uh, over voltage will, be, will remain at six. Now I don't know if this has changed because I've often used over voltage eight and I don't think I've always used force turbo equals one and I found it to be more stable uh, overclocking on my 8 gig Pi at 2147. So again, I don't know if the documentation is 100% up to date because obviously things change all the time. Software updates change things. So anyway, I'm going to add, when I go higher, I'm going to add current limit override equals 1 and force turbo equals 1 because that's definitely going to mean that uh, voltages over 6 are going to be applied. But uh, I'm not going to change anything yet because I'm going to do the first test uh, and see what happens with that. And then I'm gonna go straight up to two gigahertz and then maybe 2147, maybe 2.3 uh, and just see how I get on really, see what's fastest. So Handbrake I think is available in the ordinary app store. So I think in Twister OS you go into menu, possibly system, add remove software. So Handbrake is something I've used for years on a Mac which uh, enables you to basically resave a video file in a different format. And I figured that would be something that would be a good test because it's using the storage, but it's also using the speed of the device and we'll see if it keeps getting quicker. So handbrake, I guess we'd probably put both, both in. Okay, so that should be installed. So I guess it's gonna be under multimedia, is it? Yeah, so there's handbrake. I'm going to get rid of this for now because that's confusing because I, I'm not overclocked. So this is 1500 is the max. Actually, I'm going to add that line. 
I'm going to add these two lines anyway if I just do it now let's go to terminal and sudo nano boot config dot text so the overclock settings are near the bottom on this one and I'll just keep them together shouldn't matter where you put them so I'm going to leave those settings in so it will remain at 1500 after I reboot so control O enter control X to quit out of that reboot okay so you can see that it's remaining at 1.5 all the time uh, my temperature is going to be super low uh, because it is on this system so if I do command a pi 29 degrees um, and it had been running before I did the restart it had been running for ages so let's close that down and I need a video file now so I think I've got it on my NAS drive a little video file that I did so I obviously drag that onto the system uh, here we go so this file I did the other day because I've been meaning to do this for ages so let's copy that and pop that on the desktop 741 megabytes okay so let's close that down uh, let's just right click I think the footage is probably in 1080 so I don't know how well it plays on this uh, looks like it probably plays all right yeah it doesn't look too bad right so let's close that and uh, I need to open it in handbrake okay so let's open that file from the desktop there it is so we've got a preset here at fast 1080 let's save that to what have we got very fast 720.30 so I'll use that setting for everything uh, and I'm going to call this one 1500 because that was the clock speed that I've got it set to uh, and hit start Okay, so that's finished. I can check back on the edit to see how long it took. So, uh, where does that save? Yeah, so it saved it in the videos folder. Uh, so, I can close that. Now I need to overclock to, let's go straight up to two gigahertz. So, let's close that down, because I'll need to reboot anyway. Let's go down to the bottom here, and we need to get rid of these hashes uh, because that enables that overclock. So, but we're going to say two, and we're going to do an over voltage of six. Right. So, Control O to save that, Enter, and Control X to exit it, and let's reboot. Okay. So you can see at the top, it says two gigahertz. Uh, if I launch command a pi, it will show me the temperature. So 30 degrees, uh, and I literally just restarted it. So it didn't have any time to cool down. Uh, so let's close that down and open handbrake again. And again, this is staying at two gigahertz because of that setting that I put in the config.txt. Okay. Let's open our source from the desktop, same file. We're going to save it as general and 72030 very fast, same setting, and uh, call this one 2000. And then hit start. Interesting because it's definitely reporting a lot quicker uh, time. Obviously, it's an estimated time, um, but uh, it's definitely come up with a lower figure than the 1500 did. But we'll see from the edit which one is quicker. Okay, so that's just ended. So uh, I need to overclock higher. Let's just close that down. Oh, let's do command a pi so you can see what the temperature is. And it is a rather cool 33, 32 degrees. Even though it was running at two gigahertz constantly doing that. So go back into terminal. And let's ramp this up a bit more. So the, the figure that I've 
used for ages uh, on most of my builds uh, and it does vary on different operating systems sometimes stability is different on different operating systems but I do 2147 and an over voltage of 8 you're not supposed to go over 6 uh, it does void your warranty um, but I've, I've done it before on this and I've got quite a few pies so I'm not too worried so don't do this at your own risk basically uh, I'm not recommending you do this control X to quit out of that and then reboot so now we're at 2147 it does say 2.29 but it's done that since one of the kernel updates but the overclock setting is 2147 so I don't know if it's running at 2.29 or 2147 but I'll call it 2147 so I think that's coming up with a lower figure for an estimate but I'm not sure I will see at the end Okay, so I'm adding this bit in because my screen capture went a bit funny. So let's just show you the uh, config.txt. It's at 2.3 on the arm frequency and the over voltage I put at 11. And uh, I'll go back to the previous footage I had where I'd rebooted after applying these settings. Well, it has rebooted, so that's a good start. 2.49 it reports, but as we know, it's 2.3 is what I've set it to. Uh, so let's open up handbrake and do the same test again. Change it to general 720. Change this to 23 and hit start. Well, it's not crashing. Okay, so now I need to edit and have a look and see what all the times were. But the operating system is still going. Let's just let's just launch some things to see that everything is running fine. Oh, so let's have a look at the uh, temperature. Yeah, 30, 31. It just keeps it incredibly cool. So even running at this very high overclock, oh, look, it it, uh, it recognises it's 2.3 on here, even though it shows us 2.49 on there. That's interesting. Just quickly call. Well, let's play one of those videos and see if the last one played because obviously if it's no good if it does it fast but it doesn't play right so this is the 2 3 one yeah that looks fine doesn't it it's definitely playing all right I never skip on a bit nice and fast getting to everything Yeah, happy with that. I guess I try a little bit of uh, YouTube maybe just to show that that's playing. And let's play a bit of Wimpy's Worlds video. Yeah, so that's playing all right. I guess we could probably do with something with a bit of movement in it. Let's go up to 1080. Uh, I'll be able to do some more movement videos uh, soon because I've uh, just ordered the new Xbox Series S, the cheaper one of the two, because I just think for me I'm happy with 1440 gaming. I'm really happy with the price of it and I'm not concerned about all the reports of the uh, developers not being able to develop the games for it. I'm sure they won't have an issue. Yeah, that's playing fine. Right, so I'll come back in a minute when I've done some editing and uh, I know all the times. Okay, so the results are in. Uh, I've done all the editing for the rest of the video and basically just to check the timing, all I did was put a edit cut just after me pressing the mouse button and also I did an edit cut as soon as the handbrake graphic showed up that the file had finished. Um, so it was, it was uh, a fair test for all of them. And uh, I mean, there's a massive gain from going from 1500 to 2000. Um, but uh, 2000 to 2300, well, we've saved 36 seconds going from 2000 to 2300. So how that translates into games, because I wasn't overclocking the GPU, although some people have said that the GPU overclocking doesn't seem to make that much difference. So maybe I need to do a separate test on that for games. But uh, in this particular test, uh, it's still running fine. Uh, it's at 2300 on the overclock with the over voltage of 11 with those two lines in. So current limit override equals one and force turbo equals one. And, uh, and it's working fine. And if I call up Commander Pi, you can see that it's still at 30 degrees. Uh, it's, 
it's coping perfectly well with that. Uh, if I do, uh, let's do NeoFetch and let's have another terminal window and do neo fetch to see how long this has been running with this overclock because that will be interesting as well. So it's been up and running for an hour and 22 minutes and, and you can see that it reports 2.494 on here but Commander Pi does report it as 2.3 and remember I, I overclocked using the terminal not the overclock settings in here. Um, so I'm, I'm really happy with that so I'm going to keep trying to use 2.3 I may even push higher the timings are definitely going up um, so you know maybe I can go slightly higher without any issues because it is staying super cool and it seems very stable so maybe I can go even higher I don't know uh, but I'll keep testing anyway I hope this all helps thanks very much for watching please like and subscribe